What's up guys, Raiders Reviews here with you again, and in this video, we're doing a deep dive on Turkish 30 alt 6 in one grand ammo. I will do my absolute best to cover everything that you might want to know about this Turkish M2 ball surplus ammunition. Tons of this stuff was very recently imported into the country and is readily available on the market right now. In fact, it's about the cheapest 30 alt 6 you can get your hands on at the moment. But is this 30 alt 6 good shooting? And is it even safe for your rifle? Hopefully we'll shed some light on that. Before we get into it, just a quick reminder to give this video a thumbs up if you like seeing this military surplus firearm centric content here on YouTube. Subscribe to the channel to catch all of my future videos like this one. And let me know down in the comments if you have any ideas for future videos. Now let's move it over to the desk for an in-depth look at some Turkish 3006. So here is our Turkish Surplus 30-06. This particular batch comes in these bandoliers. Each bandolier holds six clips, and of course, each clip contains eight rounds of ammunition. Turkey joined NATO in, I believe, 1952 or 1953. Shortly thereafter, they did adopt the M1 Garand as their standard service arm, and so they started producing a lot of 30-06 ammo. This batch that we're taking a look at today was made in the late 60s to early 70s. And as we can see here, there's a little bit of variance in the color of these bandoliers, but both are head stamped 1967. And of course that is MKE showing Turkish manufacture. I'll start out by being very frank with you guys. This Turkish ammo varies a lot batch by batch. There are known bad batches of this ammunition. And that is where most of your tales of exploding firearms come from. If from what I've read online is true, you certainly want to avoid head stamps 63 and 64, especially with semi-auto firearms like the M1 Garand. But by all accounts, it seems like this late 60s, early 70s ammo is actually pretty decent. At least it's rumored to be as such. Hopefully we'll find out for sure in this video. Now this ammo is clean. It has very little corrosion. There are slight little discolorations on these cases. The bullets are all nicely crimped. Our primers do have a little bit of black sealant around the outside to keep everything nice and dry. I've poked around in a lot of this lot and I really find this to be a representative example of what you can expect in terms of physical condition. Definitely very serviceable in my opinion. I think we need to pull one of these bullets to see exactly what it's made of though. So I have my bullet puller preloaded here. That was a super tightly seated bullet but I think we finally got it here. So it looks like we are dealing with a stick powder. As far as the bullet goes, we do have a very slight boat tail at the end, but nothing too extreme. We have our exposed core there, which is supposedly lead. The projectile should be 150 grains. And I do have an old hard drive magnet here to see if a magnet pulls this bullet or not. These hard drive magnets are pretty darn strong. And for what I'm seeing, this thing is completely non-magnetic. Just because I'm curious, we will take a look at the cross section of this bullet right quick. So I have my grinder here. And let's get to grinding. This is still blazing hot. It has a pretty thick jacket with a pretty small core actually. I do believe this jacket is a copper zinc alloy and the core should be solid lead. I have saved you guys some time by pre-cutting the case head and there's our cross section of that. We can see there, this does have a single hole, meaning that these are boxer primers as advertised, making this ammo reloadable, a huge factor for a lot of you 30 all six shooters out there. Again, the cases are completely non-magnetic because these are brass. That makes for a neat little cutaway round for display, if nothing else. So we know how the ammo is packaged. We know how the ammo looks and we know a little bit about how it's put together. But I think the real reason you're coming to this video is to find out how this ammo shoots. And that brings us to velocities. M2 ball ammunition, which this is essentially supposed to be the Turkish version of, is spec'd at 2,740 feet per second velocity. In the little bit of chrono shooting that we did, our eight round average velocity came in at 28, 21, and that ranged from the mid 2700s to the upper 2800s. Fairly consistent over my admittedly small sample size for a military surplus round, but it should be noted that this ammo definitely seems to be a little bit hotter than your standard M2 ball. I also snuck in one shot on the Chrono with a 1917, and if memory serves, that came in at like 2870. Barrel on that rifle is slightly longer than that of the M1 Garand, and so you would expect a slightly higher velocity out of that particular rifle. I was pretty shocked in our accuracy testing though. Here is our target. Now as sort of a control, I decided to get on paper with some CMP ammunition first. This ammo that I bought from the CMP was loaded by Creedmoor 
Moore, which is a well-regarded ammo manufacturer. Our target, as usual, was at 50 yards. These targets are quite small. And to be completely honest, we were shooting a little late in the evening. And with those given light conditions, these small targets and my terrible eyes, it was almost impossible to actually see the target. With that Creedmoor ammo, my first group was down here in the bottom. There's a case for some perspective. That was with my sight dialed in at 200 meters. I moved it up to 300 meters and I shot that group there. And then I handed the rifle off to Cheese Toast and he put in those two rounds with that same Creedmoor ammo. Since we were shooting low, I decided to crank the sights up to 400 meters. And then we started with the Turkish ammo. My very first group with our Turk ammo, as you can see here, was pretty darn near the center of the target. Mind you, all I can make out is a little bit of red. I do my best to put the front sight on it. Again, there's our case for perspective. It's a decent little three round group. Next, I put in this very impressive little group just right and above our bullseye there. That is super tight. A group like this is literally as good as I could ever hope to shoot. And then we have another three shot group here that was a little low and to the left, but again, a very nice tight little group bear in mind once more that i could barely make this target out at the distance we were shooting the last m1 grand group that i recorded here was this one we have five shots pretty much dead center but high and i wrote here quick shots because these were in pretty rapid succession at 50 meters that is a stellar group for me with iron sights. To change things up a little bit we did a couple groups with the 1917. now the 1917 was shooting super high at this 50 yard distance, I was aiming down here and I put in this rather large group here. By the time we made it to the 1917, the light was so low that I was basically guessing at where I was aiming at. And Cheese Toast managed to put in a little bit tighter group, but still very high of the target. So in terms of accuracy, I have very high opinions of this ammo. It is as accurate as any surplus ammo I have ever run across. It definitely shoots at least as good as I do, probably better. So for me, it's getting high marks in the accuracy department. I have a good bit of spent brass here. My M1 chews up brass a little bit. I know that's pretty common to see the necks all dented in and it rips on the rims pretty good. But on every spent casing that I observed, the primers look just as they should. No bulging or cracking. And we didn't have a single split case or cracked neck. Despite this ammo having a little bit of age on it, the brass does not seem to be especially brittle. Again, good news for those of you who reload. One of my rules when shooting semi-auto mil serps is that I do not shoot corrosive ammunition in my semi-autos. It is way too time consuming to do a full disassembly and cleaning of a semi-auto rifle every time I go out and shoot. So I'll put corrosive ammo through some of my bolt guns because all you're doing is cleaning one pipe, but on a semi-auto, there's a lot more to it. So it was very important for me to find out whether or not this ammo is non-corrosive. On every website it's being sold on, they are saying it's non-corrosive, but I tend to be a little bit of a skeptic. So I put forth my best effort to devise a way to test whether or not this ammo is corrosive. This is in no way perfect, but it is the best I could come up with. This is a steel plate that I found laying in the woods where we do our shooting at. It was already thoroughly rusted. So with an aggressive wire brush, I did my best to polish a couple shooting lanes on either side of it here. For our testing, we did two types of ammo, some 7.62 by 54R shot out of a M44 Mosin that I 100% know is corrosive. And then our 30 out six here, which I happened to shoot out of a 1903. I tried to get the muzzle of the rifle as close to the plate as possible and still be safe to distribute as much potential corrosive salts as possible onto our shooting lanes. I have given this almost a solid month to see how much rusting it is going to do. We'll take a look at this 7.62 by 54R here first. Since it's sort of our control in this situation, we know for a fact this ammo is corrosive. It is World War II Russian surplus. For our 54R, the muzzle of the rifle was right here and we can pretty clearly see that we have some rust in this region right here. Now, like I said, this testing methodology is not perfect. It would have been much better to start with a super shiny, unpitted, unrusted piece of steel, but unfortunately I couldn't find one. This here though, I think you can make it out in the camera, is a patch of rust and that extends very lightly out to about here where these pits here have some very visible orange 
rust on our 30-06 side, that distinct patch of rust just under where the muzzle would be at is not present. This looks virtually the same way that it did when I got done with my wire wheel in the first place. So I think that is about as definitive as I'm going to get with the issue of whether or not this ammo is corrosive. My conclusion is that this ammo is in fact non-corrosive. In the worst case scenario, it may be slightly corrosive. So if you're super worried about your rifle, I would still advise cleaning after shooting, but I do believe the advertisements would be true in that this ammo is in fact non-corrosive ammunition. And that's a good thing if you're wanting to shoot it out of your M1. So the ammo is clean, it is accurate, it's non-corrosive. A big factor in terms of value is that it is conveniently loaded on M1 Garand M-Block clips. This ammo is priced very very aggressively. Being about the only 30 all 6 available here in 2023 that is less than a dollar a round, but will it blow your gun up? I'm not gonna lie, I was worried to shoot this ammo in my M1 Garand. That firearm means a lot to me and I didn't want to damage it. Turkish ammunition has always been synonymous with one thing, and that is that it is crap. This Turkish M2 ball though doesn't seem to fall in that category from everything that I've experienced. We shot right at two full bandoliers of this ammo over the course of two trips to the range and we did not encounter a single malfunction and I'll admit my sample size is small. I haven't tested every batch of this ammo but as far as the 67 head stamped MKE goes I'm going to say it's pretty safe to shoot. There wasn't a ton of variance in the velocities so that makes me think that the Turks were actually paying attention to how much powder they were putting in the cases. That's backed up by it being a consistent shooting load, able to achieve very tight groups. For this Turkish ammo, I really think it comes down to what batch of the ammo you receive. And if you buy some of this and it turns out to be early 60s, you might want to think twice about putting it in your M1 because it might end up popping that rifle. And as far as shooting it in bolt action rifles, I wouldn't be afraid to even stick a bit of the sketchier stuff in my 1903s or my 1917 because the action is far more robust bust than the semi-auto action of the M1. If you know for a fact that the batch of ammo you're looking at is late 60s or early 70s though, I say go for it. That's my opinion only. I could go out to the range tomorrow and stick one of these clips in my gun and it could blow up. I'm willing to take on a little bit of risk to save a little bit of money. I can't give this ammo my 100% ringing endorsement to go out and buy as much of it as you can because there is that underlying risk of whether or not you'll get a bum batch. Every experience that I've had with it has been 100% positive and I am extremely happy that I bought this ammo when I did. And I think that about does it for our long-awaited Turkish 30-06 ammo video. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. It was a lot of work putting this one together. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that thumbs up. That really does help the channel out with the Google algorithm and getting the video distributed to other viewers. If you know someone else or group of people that might find this video helpful or informative, please share the video because that helps the channel more than anything else. Subscribe so you don't miss any of my future content involving Milsurp firearms and Milsurp ammunition. Drop me a comment letting me know what you thought about this video and whether or not you're willing to risk the Turkish 30-06 in your M1 Garand. Thanks again for watching and I will catch you guys in the next video. See you then. Peace.